in the right way. So I'm going to talk about uh, RO Crate, um, which is a research object crate, which is a research data packaging um, specification. Um, I'll just go through what RO Crate does first. Um, and then I'll just talk about one particular issue with how we use, well, we, how we run into people who need to use a vocabulary um, that's not defined. So we're working in a very different kind of level from the last presentation. Um, there's real, real contrast. Um, we're just we're picking up random people from random disciplines um, and trying to trying to help them. Uh, move into using linked data. So RO Crate is a, so it's an international effort now, um, which is about trying to use linked data principles to describe research data. And it's big focuses on packaging data so that um, if, you, if you grab a zip file from somewhere and you open it up, um, you have good quality linked data metadata in there. Um, which describes at least what um, the, the who, what, where, why of a data set um, in linked data, uh, but also has in there um, an HTML file which exposes that metadata so you can actually read it. So it's in, it's in there in JSON-LD, um, but also with an HTML file. RO-Crate came about as a, a, a merger of two standards efforts. So there's some stuff that was happening um, led by my team at UTS, University of Technology, Sydney, um, where we had started doing this uh, and called it Data Crate. Uh, we were looking at being able to package all sorts of different kinds of data. So we've got, you know, everything that you might run across in a, in a university, satellite imagery that's been processed for vegetation indexes. Uh, this one's a history data set. Um, we've got engineering stuff about bridges and engineering um, stuff about um, time codes on networks and like just the whole, it's a comprehensive um, repository that we're running. And so we, we're looking for ways to uh, describe data that are not, not domain, domain um, dependent. Um, and so we were working on that and we met um, some people from Research Object who are based out of Manchester in the UK. Uh, and they've been looking at, um, their, their team's been looking at um, modeling this in with a, probably a bit, a bit more of a sort of a scholarly purpose about being able to describe research objects uh, and their provenance. I think I've got my slides a bit out of order. There you are. So that's, that's the, um, This is the RO Crate page. Um, I, we're really, I'm, one of the things I'd like to do is just make people aware of this. So if it's of interest, uh, we want to talk to repository owners and um, people dealing with data about adopting this format um, and, and getting feedback about why not if they don't want to. Um, because it uses schema.org as the, um, as the core metadata standard, um, it's actually, compatible with the latest, the thing that Google released very fairly recently, the Google dataset search, um, which looks for schema.org um, metadata uh, packaged as JSON-LD, you know, hiding in web pages um, and can build catalogs. And there's, there's a, <clears throat> when we started this work um, at UTS, we, we did a, fairly comprehensive sort of survey of all the different standards that were out there and had a look at what we might base a research data packaging standard on. Uh, so we looked at um, obviously building up, you know, from Dub Dublin Core and the, uh, the collections work, was it Dublin, is it DC collections? Um, and we kind of compared all the different approaches, including other things like uh, the frictionless data um, effort. But when we actually mapped it all out, in terms of describing a, a generic research data object where you want to know at the top level who created it, who published it, how was it funded, what people were involved, um, you can do all of that with schema.org and that had the best, by far the best coverage of any 
sort of published vocabulary that we could find. So we settled on that. Um, I was expecting maybe a little bit more pushback from the community about that because, um, you know, schema.org came from a sort of commercial, I can see some nodding there. Um, schema.org came from a commercial place and it was run by, you know, big, um, big corporates. Um, but it seems like this is the way uh, the research data is going anyway. RDA, as in the ARDC, Research Data Australia, have been publishing data in this format. And there are several Research Data Alliance working groups that have, are also clustering around using these. So I, it's not, um, it seems to be fairly mainstream. The thing that I had up before is just uh, showing you um, what it looks like if you download um, if you download one of these um, crates, say as a zip file, there's an HTML file in there. And if you open it up, you get uh, like a human readable thing like this. And you can actually click around. I'm not going to give a demo or anything because it's such a short talk, but you can uh, click around and look at what's inside. Um, and down to definitions of descriptions of files and um, how they were created. So I talked a bit about the. Um, so we use skimmer.org. One of the nice things about schema.org is that it has um, it has a page uh, that actually resolves when you click on a term. Now, this is not true of all vocabularies. If you if you're trying to play with um, with linked data, um, I'm sure people in this group have run into finding something that either doesn't resolve at all anymore or takes you to an owl file or something. I mean, maybe the people in this group love that. Um, but I don't, and I don't think it's a good thing to subject users to. So one of the nice things about schema.org is that it has these pages. Um, this is, I, I pinched this type, this slide out of another presentation, which was talking about why it's good for something to resolve um, to a page that explains what it is, because this one is showing that um, in schema.org, title means something quite specific, which is to do with job notices. Uh, and the thing you're probably looking for if you're trying to do title in the Dublin core sense is name. Um, so, but at least you can see that if you speak English, anyway, you can go, you can see what something is. So here's another snapshot of one of our sample files. Um, and it shows the, um, the little question marks here that, that point off to um, definitions of things. So that one, the, that example is pointing off to name. Um, and you can see on this page, some of the kinds of data that you could include if you want to. And this one's got EXIF data. Um, and it's also uh, got some provenance stuff in here about um, how we model the production, the, the creation of a file. Um, this is just showing that we have, we're shipping both human readable, it's a human there on the right, and machine readable, uh, uh, data and uh, this is just to give you a bit of a flavor about the kind of representation that you can do that works scheme schema.org again has it has enough to do very basic provenance without having to go to other ontologies so you can make statements about so we have me up the top there as um, but the we have these create actions that talk about how uh, and the image object um, that we were just looking at uh, was created. So that's create action photo one, created that for that picture. Um, and you can have, um, <coughs> you know, places and, and products and so on. Um, not nowhere near as sophisticated as what Natalia was talking about with the um, describing uh, individual pieces of equipment, but you can do it. Okay, so that's a really quick intro to what we're doing. Um, and I hope that made sense. We'll, we'll find out in the questions. Um, one of the things I'll, I just want to pick one thing to talk about that's been a real challenge, which is uh, when we're dealing with people coming from different, um, different disciplines, uh, they often have their own local context, right? So, well, of course, they, they, you know, do they have the discipline context? So if we were talking to people doing the marine science observation stuff, then it would be quite easy to um, 
to use the linked data principles and you could draw on those vocabularies we were just hearing about and that would slot straight into this framework. Right? Um, but when we, we run into problems, say uh, we were talking to people from uh, one of our microscopy facilities um, who are got lots of microscope images and they're using the open microscope environment and a Mero, which is a repository. But when we actually looked to find ontologies and vocabularies at that stage, so this was a couple of years ago that we started the conversation, um, you could get, X, there was XML schemas, but there were no defined vocabularies that went with them. Um, and, to, and describing things like instrumentation was a, was a real problem. So the lab manager we worked with or the lab tech we worked with in that, in that context, started setting up wiki pages for each piece of uh, microscopy equipment down to the lenses and filters and so on, which hadn't been properly documented before. And that gave him URIs that he could use, which at least uniquely identified things um, that he could, we could start to use in the linked data context. Not particularly sophisticated, but um, it was a way to get going. And I wanna talk about another sort of case uh, where I'm dealing with, uh, we're working with a, um, some people from the humanities. I've just I've thrown this one in here. This is a um, this is uh, a work in progress from the Paradisic um, group, which is a um, language and cultural archive, Paradisic. Um, and they're in, they're in the process of porting their data uh, so that it's all described using RO crates. Um, all the collections and items are described using this this same technology uh, because. They want to make things interoperate, not so much on an item level, but on a technology level that uh, they've been having to maintain um, their own stack, their own repository application for, for many years, and uh, are interested in converging on uh, being able to reuse tools. So this is something that Marco La Rosa in Melbourne has put together. Um, this is just a sort of a placeholder to to remind me to talk about Paradisic. Um, but I'm gonna talk about um, this data set, which is being collected by um, Alana Piper, who's a historian, criminal, uh, I call it, I'm gonna call her a criminal historian, but I think maybe a, a history of cr criminology, um, uh, who uh, has been digitizing um, prison records um, for, Big chunk of time from the mid 1800s into the um, into the next century, um, and uh, organising crowdsourced transcription, which, uh, as an aside, worked has worked really well in lockdown. Um, there's lots of people all around the world who've gone into a crowdsourced trans transcription and finished the job off way ahead of time. So that was really good. Well, we're going to have about 50,000 of these, um, and. There's a lot of there's a lot of data in the in Alana's in Alana's data set when we're describing people birth date birthplace these are things that come straight out of schema.org and they they're not a problem but there are some specific things that she's got around uh, like she has education codes which are a bit more specific because it was specific to the particular particular Victorian prison system um, and uh, sentencing so how to deal with custom properties. Um, uh, what we want, and this the thing I'm showing you here is was part of a really stupid experiment that I did um, to try and work out how we could have these have an ad hoc vocabulary, right? If you're not writing off to, um, if you're not sort of in collaboration with a, a, a big institution or you don't know, you don't actually have the resources to get a vocabulary online properly, um, how could you actually at least ship some kind of vocabulary with a linked data data set? Um, and this was a stupid, very stupid um, thing that I did here. Um, but it was fun, uh, where we actually, I actually encoded the description of an RDF property into a URL and then set up a website that would actually display this back to you. So you get something, the idea was that you get something like that schema.org page that I just showed. Um, and this is Alana's description of what education means in her, means in her context. So um, this is obviously not a very sensible thing to do, but. Um, what we're aiming for is being able to show a page like this that goes along with the data set so that when you're looking, when you're looking at the, the HTML 
file or if you're trying to reprocess data, you've actually got access to the definition of the property. Um, this is the web's, this is my um, blog where I did that stupid experiment. Um, and I'm just gonna finish up now with, this is the solution that we've come up with. Um, and I'm assuming reasonable familiarity with these sort of concepts of JSON LD and so on in this group, but I can explain further if that, if it's required. Um, so JSON LD works with, JSON linked data works using contexts so that you can actually let developers <coughs> who are um, creating, um, you know, creating metadata records just work with things like name and description and so on um, and treat stuff like JSON, but then there are definitions. So this is, this is the, oh, sorry, this is a definition for sentence. Um, and that after talking to some sensible, more sensible people from the rest of the RO crate um, community, um, what we're looking at at the moment, this is our current thinking on this, is to define uh, UUID URNs, um, which are unique. And so you could reuse these if you want to, but they're not resolving to something on the web. And because it's not resolving to something on the web, you actually ship the property definition uh, in the, um, with the data set uh, so that the HTML viewing software will be updated so that it will actually, if you click on a definition, it will actually show you this definition that you know, this, a sentence is a penalty imposed by a court um, with, with the complete definition in there. So that's, that's where we've got to with this um, idea. Um, and I'm gonna have a couple of examples out fairly soon um, from uh, history and literature, uh, and we'll start looking at this with people who bring us data sets um, where we can't find good, um, good can't find good ontologies and don't can't wait. So that's that. Um, I'm just advertising RO Crate. You can join. Um, it's if, so if anybody's interested in coming along um, to our meetings, there at 6 a.m. Um, East Coast time uh on once a month on a friday um and there are a few tools out there for processing um i'll send through this presentation but there's a um, few tools there's a thing that marco la rosa has written called describo which is a desktop cross-platform desktop app which actually lets you um, build up descriptions um, and he's done some work on loading vocabularies into that so things like language codes um, you can load in all the language codes if you're working on, on, a, on a repository like um, Paradisec. Uh, and there, there's a lot more work to do there with um, making vocabularies easy to use. Um, and there's, some, there's a couple of other things there on that page. So that's me.